When, when a patient has an injury that may have involved the flexors of the fingers, uh, we need to examine those. Uh, there are two flexors to each finger. One is the FDP, the flexor digitorum profundus, and the other is the FDS, flexor digitorum superficialis. So the first thing to look at is whether they have a normal cascade. So the normal cascade we can see here, when the patient is relaxed, the fingers are flexed at different uh, amounts. If the patient is, for some reason, unable to comply with the full examination, for instance, in a very small child or someone who is uh, unconscious, then the, then the thing to do is to squeeze the forearm. And you can usually then get gross composite flexion. You move around a little bit, you should then get all four fingers in. And you can see whether or not there is continuity of the flexor. Specific examination uh, of them in a patient who is able to comply with you. Um, the, as I say, there are two tendons. We want to examine both the FDP and the FDS. FDP is a mass action muscle in which one muscle has four tendons and flexes all four fingers. So to examine the FDP of the index finger, I would stabilise the middle phalanx and ask the patient, can you bend down the tip of your finger for me, okay, and press against me. So flexion against resistance of the FDP. That one's easier. The FDS, on the other hand, flexes at the proximal interphalangeal joint, but so does the FDP. So in order to isolate the FDS flexion, we have to uh, handicap the FDP. And because it's a mass action muscle, we can do that by holding all the other fingers straight and asking the patient again to bend that finger down. Now, because the FDP is a mass action muscle and we've held it out in full flexion, when she bends the proximal interphalangeal joint, the only tendon that can be doing that is the FDS. If you bend it down and hold it for me, I can prove that FDP is not having any action there because it is completely slack at the DIP joint. So in summary, when I want to examine the FDP, I would say to the patient, I would, I, I would immobilise the middle phalanx and ask say to the patient, can you bend the tip of the finger down? Good, that's fine. And then to examine the FDS, I'd hold the, all the other fingers out straight and say again, can you bend that finger down for me? There are uh, some exceptions to that. Uh, the little finger doesn't always have an independent FDS. So if I was to hold the FDP uh, for all the other fingers and ask the patient to bend down at the little finger, this patient does have an FDS uh, to the little finger. However, some people, myself included, if I hold my fingers down, I can't bend um, at the proximal interphalangeal joint of my little finger. There are two possible explanations for this. One is that I don't have an FDS, but the other is that it is tethered to the FDS of my ring finger. So then if I, t only, if I release the ring finger as well, I can flex both the ring and little fingers down.